Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to Stonehearth with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome to our little village on the Isle of Zeech. In today's episode, I have one major goal, which is to begin production of a bit of a defensive wall structure. This way, we can force the enemies to follow a very specific path, and we won't end up with enemies randomly attacking citizens for a moment, causing massive amounts of unhappiness happiness and apparently a little bit of death from time to time. So how we're going to do this is of course I can't completely block off the enemy and this includes with doors. A few people have said this still causes issues so right now it's best to simply force them to go down a very long route which our halflings won't be on. So what I'm going to do is put a wall along here all the way so no enemies will randomly go to the side here and then begin walling down this section and then finally leaving the gap somewhere here, since for the most part, there is no reason for any of our villagers to ever leave the safety of inside this village area. So the enemies would have to go all the way down this route to finally be able to get into the base where our halflings are, and by then, our forces would have already engaged them, thus they can't attack us. This does mean we could also build archer towers along this wall, although as we've seen in the past in previous seasons, in theory, they're really good. In practice, they're really, really weird. So, nothing there for me to purchase. Do we get a brand new person today, or shall we begin naming the people like I promised to do last episode? Come on, give me my daily update. There we are. Oh, some enemies have just spawned in. By the looks of things, fairly weak and sadly not quite enough value in our town just yet. But that's fine. Enemies ho! A nice, easy fight to start the day. There we go. And you go back to where you were. Okay. Even... Without the wall, having our people fortified here does make the chance of our halflings being attacked far lower anyway. So, let's get to finally naming the people. Now, the first one I've already looked up, so you there, the worker, who will most likely eventually become a farmer, your new name is Boulderdash. There we are. That's one done, and many, many more to go, so ex excuse me whilst I look up my little sheet. Now this second name, sadly I don't fully get the reference, all I know is this is a character from Attack on Titan and it's something I really need to watch, but according to the person who suggested this, the name fits incredibly well and with the amount of upvotes that person got, it certainly seems like it fits. So there you are, you are a blondie, which apparently is the same in the show, and you are fantastic at fighting and all round, well, you will eventually become one of our soldiers. Since you are likely to be forever our hard worker, and you are a pack mule, the comment section has decided you are indeed Brock from Pokemon. So well done, there's your name. You are being named Buttons for a very, very cute reason, because this is the name of a pet ferret that the person suggesting this name had as a child. Also, it's a very cute name. Well done, Buttons, the animal slayer. Well, you know, it's cute until you realise what she's doing with those traps. Well, this is rather sad, but since this trapper was a replacement trapper, the same as Buttons, you are simply called the replacement. And that is all you will be known for for the rest of your time. Which is kind of sad, honestly. It also, I would like to quickly mention something now we're on this screen. The way that this arrow moves is a little bit odd and not quite how I originally thought. I thought that as long as these were taking effect, the arrow would consistently move all the way, but it seems like there's limits depending on how much good is actually going in, so this will never allow the happiness to go all the way over here. Now, I could be wrong about this. This is just what I'm observing right now, so don't take what I've just said as the gospel truth, but I may need to go about testing out the whole happiness thing in the future, because it does seem like getting them away from content 
is actually difficult, even towards sadness. With the recent grieving after losing some people, I expected more people to go into the sad area even with these happy things. But it seemed like there was a limit. They all kind of stopped at this area here on the content scale. So we really need to make these people happy. Okay, this may be the cutest one out there. You are being turned into Lil Timmy because you are the happiest little fighter out there because your trait, of course, is optimistic. So there we are, Lil Timmy, and you are now done as well. Oh, that's adorable. Still so many to go, though. I'm so sorry, Runa, but your new name, as suggested by at least seven different people, is Potato. Other names included Spud and Mash. So, yeah, apparently when I say someone's useless, everyone instantly thinks Potato. I'm sorry. But at least it does fit your job. Well, one of our chefs are being renamed after a rather well-loved chef, which is sadly before my time, so I didn't really see much of her stuff. And, well, it's more of an American thing than an English thing. So there we are, Julia Child. But to be fair, even I know of her, so certainly transcending the generations. The first of our priests to be renamed in this episode, you are the Doctor. High of spirit and high of mind. And yes, I did point at those the wrong way around, but you still get the general gist of things. Apparently, the Overwatch comments are simply overwhelming, and with Mel, you are now being transformed into arguably one of the more hated of the Overwatch characters due to her lovely ability to freeze everyone in place and block off paths if being particularly trolly. Yep, you are May. Well done. Well, that's it. Everyone has now been renamed until we get some new people. So, let's go ahead and attack this lovely group over there, and let's get started building our wall. So, which one of you enemies is going to pay for this exactly? And how? Well, we will negotiate that later. The important thing is, we're starting the building. So, it doesn't really need to be that big. When it comes down to it, in this game, it could literally be just a single line. That's it. The enemies do not yet attack walls. They will only attack doorways. So, it really doesn't matter. It's all for looks. We can go all out and make it very decorative, but also very expensive and quite difficult to build, and it will take all episode to build the thing. Or we could make it quite simplistic, like a border fence, something more practical and easy to do. It really depends on how I want to do it. But the thing is, I do have a soft spot for medieval style walls and stuff like that, so what I think I'm going to do is build a small tower here. It's just going to be a very simple square tower so it can be built quickly and with the minimum amount of glitches as it's being built, and then have perhaps a three wide or actually no, a four wide wall with the centerpiece being able to be moved on, then we can have some ladders going into the main tower here, and then we can run along the gangway all the way across the wall to this section, in which I will have another, perhaps smaller, tower? I'm not sure. Or, or we could have a small tower in the center and then have a larger tower here. This goes down, one more small tower, and then one more large tower which will have the opening here next to the water, which I will probably just build a fence on so it looks a bit more enclosed. Once again, we're not going to be going for archer towers just yet, but, and it's a big but, the towers we build will be completely accessible, so if we ever do want to try to use them as towers, we can. This also means, now that we have a choke point, we can start building things like the engineering... What they call the engineering weapons, the little stationary turrets, that's it. And I've actually got an idea for those. So in the past, the turrets have been less than perfect. They're quite easy to hit, you can't really raise them too much because sadly that decreases their range, as going down counts as part of their range, at least it did in the past. It was very weird and clearly the turrets were not complete, but what we could do is just build out to here, build the turret on a small island, then knock down the bridge and then have it firing at the melee which go past. If an enemy is ranged, they will still outrange it. It's just how it is. But that all hinges on getting an engineer in the first place, which means if we go to our blacksmith, 
Where are you? I am blind. Hello, Ragnarok. You there, you could always be changed into an engineer later on. So, maybe we'll do that, maybe we won't. Honestly, I've had minimal success with the engineer class, and I found it almost worthless in the previous season. So first, let's clear out all this stuff, and then we can get building. Okay, so after second thought, two changes to our idea with the wall. The first thing is, building a square tower would look awful. It really would. Looking back at it, it's just a terrible idea. Secondly, the main wall segment itself, I'm going to make seven wide rather than four wide, because four just looked really, really small. So here we are, make that by 9, so the connection looks at least somewhat natural. So this will be the base of one of the towers, so let's just fill that in. Now is this a little bit too small? We could make this a little bit bigger, but since we're not really going to use them much, I think keeping them on the smaller side to make sure the village still looks like a village and not some kind of fortification is what we're going to go with. I may regret this in the future, but for now, that is the idea. There we are. Yeah, that looks so much better than trying to do that as a square. Hmm, now what type of door shall we use? Honestly, just a normal door seems to look the best. And of course, the other doors don't even fit perfectly symmetrically anyway, so yeah. Let's go with a reinforced door. That seems reasonable. So that will be the first floor of it. So what shall I do now? Shall I increase it? I think I will give it one more layer at the same size. So let's quickly add this foundation piece. So we have this for now, and of course the wall will go along here, so these two windows are also absolutely pointless. So let's remove both of those. Goodbye and goodbye. And then we have space here, we're just going to add a simple ladder after we complete the building itself so that people can get up and down nice and easily. Now, as for the top of this, I don't really know what I'm going to do. The issue is, being so tall, the high ground is not actually a good thing in this game. For the most part, it's actually a negative, so... How much do I want to make it friendly for our archers, and how much do I want to just simply keep it simple so that the building can continue without people getting stuck quite as much? I'm not really too sure yet. Although, I would like a couple of banners. Banners would be cool. But that is a really weird placement for one, so... We could do something like this... Which may be a bit of overkill, though. That's a little too much supporting your cause. It's a little bit odd looking. But even so, you get the idea. Something like that, just to make it look a bit more alive. I don't know. We will see as we continue. Well, here's something odd. The natural roof, if you go with this cylinder sort of shape, actually looks really good. But of course, we could also do this which is the natural way of doing crenellations, but as you can see, it doesn't quite get it. It's not quite sure about how to do this. Yeah, that looks a little bit off there, buddy. Can I delete any of these blocks? No, so I, I would be stuck with this. But honestly, that does work. It looks fairly robust, it doesn't make the whole structure look too small, so maybe what I'm going to do then is just build this manually using slabs, and then make sure there's a hole so that the ladder can be attached afterwards as well. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And there we go, so now it's a lot more uniform, and we do have access via a ladder, so that should be absolutely fine. I've also started building the wall. I think I've decided the wall itself is going to be wood, and only the towers are going to be completely stone. Also, why is that one opaque and that one ghostly? Okay then, that's weird. 
It seems like building is still incredibly glitchy in this game, and honestly, that's a pretty big deal for me. It's incredibly annoying, because right now, I've placed this just briefly, just to see where the building is actually going to be. It's going to be over here, and now if I finish editing and remove it, remove this building, the building stays there. I can't move this template anymore, which I should be able to. I have relogged three times, and now... This is in the wrong place. Yeah. So, I don't really know what to do with this. If it wasn't in the wrong place, it wouldn't be so much of a big deal. But also, the windows are glitching out and not showing themselves. It's just a bit of a mess. So what I will most likely have to do is cheat, which is horrible. I don't like cheating in this game because it's very easy to do, and once you start doing it, it's kind of muscle memory on remembering how to do it. Right now I forgot, but I know for a fact I could cheat so this instantly builds, and then I could use the command to instantly destroy it. Although I would get some of the resource back, I think. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't think you do get resource back that way. So I'll be right back once I've done that. Would you like to see something really odd? I just allowed this building to start being built, and it actually started building this building over here. Apparently, they are the same thing. I don't know how this happened, but apparently this one doesn't really exist. So let's try and remove this one. Okay, there we go. This wasn't even present the last few resaves. At least this way I didn't actually have to do any of the cheat commands, so I am rather happy about that. So, now that I'm putting down the wall, since now I'm just ignoring this section for a while after all that buggy goodness which just took up my last 20 minutes, let's make this look a little bit more 3D, a little bit more... I don't know, a bit more realistic rather than just a sheer wall face. Now the problem is, by adding so many slabs, we are running the risk of having a lot of glitches when it comes to actually building this section, which we can certainly live with, but it is going to be very, very annoying at the same time. I just need to keep very careful eye on my halflings so that none of them suffocate or randomly trap themselves as to not be able to get food or anything like that, because sadly it does happen very, very often, and it's not the best way to keep my people happy by, you know, starving them inside a half-finished building. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty nice. Then add a little section there, pretending that's the staircase. Then I'm going to raise this section one more time, I think. Or will I? Or will I do it more like crenellations? That looks interesting. Uh, that would work. Yeah, have one extremely large crenellation, then one small, then one large again. Certainly looks different, if nothing else. So like that, so it's two hanging over, and then this. Yeah, I actually quite like that. It's not very standard looking, but it certainly looks unique. And sadly, right now as well, the back button, the undo button, isn't working, so every time I do anything at the moment, I have to do it manually. Running into a fair few glitches today, it's been very odd since, for the most part, our playthrough of this particular alpha has been quite uneventful, not all that many glitches, just that one person dying from unknown causes, which I believe is just a matter of them dying in such an awkward position that our clerics couldn't get to them. Well, dying, then being carted back, so knocked unconscious, then being carted back, and then just kind of left. There we are. So the next thing we need to think about is, how am I going to do the smaller tower around about here? And I have two possibilities. The first is just a lower down version of this tower, the second floor not being quite as high, and it not being quite as large in terms of the base size. But a second idea is a gatehouse. Now, the gatehouse does pose both a problem and a huge benefit. The benefit is that now the halflings have a way to get out, which isn't our little funnel pass over here, which all of the enemies are going to be moving in. The main issue is that it will have to have a door. The door is attackable. Now, hopefully, 
the enemies won't go for the door, but I have seen random enemies from time to time going all the way along here, even before I started building the wall, obviously, because it isn't even being built yet, so that goes without saying. Anyway, I've seen random enemies going all the way over here to just attack a door, for no reason. There's no one inside, they've just attacked it. So, not really sure what I'm going to do there. So for now, I think we should just build this up, so that this is all finished and ready, and so the building won't be quite as oversized when I start getting to the rest of it. So let's remove this section for now. I'm going to save the game and allow this to begin. This is going to take a while. We are still building another house as well. It's almost been one full day cycle, and we have a bit of wood on the floor. That so far has been our progress. Now, when this is fully built, what I think I'm going to do is add lights all the way along the wall, because although lights do cause a lot of lag, and that's why I've not been using them much around the town, it will just look really cool on such an impressive structure as the defense tower and the defensive wall. Or at least, that's what I'm hoping it will. On the bright side, at the moment, our food stocks are looking better than they have in a very, very long time. Almost everyone currently has the happiness bonus for eating a tasty meal, because now, with both our trappers leveling up, and so much space being dedicated to the trappers, we are getting a lot of raw meat, which means we are making a lot of omelettes. In addition to this, if we don't have any omelettes, we have loads of tasty vegetable stews ready, which do count as cooked food, even though not tasty food. It's food, it's cooked, it's better than a raw carrot. The more I look at the village, the more I realise our original plan isn't going to work out the way I would like it to. So rather than have it wrapping around here, and then simply not really giving us enough space, I'm going to start putting down some stone over here all the way along, which will look a little bit artificial, I admit, but either way, this will give us plenty more space, and thus we can put the wall much further out, so the wall can go down here instead, rather than down this really thin slither of land. This would also give us more space for trappers, if we ever need them, some more pasture space or farm space, or of course, just more of our lovely identical houses. Now, a few people have actually been asking me, why do I keep on building the same house over and over? Why am I adding no variety? And honestly, it's just personal preference. I like this idea. I like seeing the same house over and over again. It just seems like it's something built together. Now, of course, everyone's personal preference will be different here, and I can certainly see why people would like them to have a bit more variance and to be a little bit more unique, but I just like it like this. Maybe I'm just boring. A new day and a brand new person. Hello there. You have six of body and five of mind. Although, you wish to be a blacksmith. Actually, that's not a terrible idea, because soon I would like to upgrade our current blacksmith, Ragnarok, into an engineer. So what I could do right now is just build ourselves the engineering wrench. There we go, the engineer's wrench. And then simply a blacksmith hammer from the mason. And then make our current blacksmith into an engineer, and our new person into a blacksmith. And that will make them happy, and that will get all of our jobs working again. Okay, let's just wait until those are done, and we can make our new engineer. Whilst they're building their tools, I would like to quickly look at this. So this is just a quick size sketch, I suppose. A quick test of size, if I were to completely coat this with stone. And honestly... It sort of looks like a dog, but it also looks completely hideous. And by dog, I mean, look, it's an ear, that'll be the eye, there's the snout. Ah, oh, isn't that adorable? But either way, that is actually really, really bad looking, so I don't think I am going to do that. So I really have to think how I am going to do this wall. One idea would be to just have the opening here so that enemies can't go across and down, or from here and down. They always have to go through this opening, which will always go through this little fortified area. So there's no way the enemy will get to a civilian before it gets to our fighting forces anyway. So maybe that will do. Maybe that will, will be good enough. It just isn't our original idea. So can we now make our new blacksmith? Let's have a quick look-see. There you are. Click, 
and our current blacksmith will be converted into an engineer. And before I forget, there is something I would like to do, because I keep on forgetting to do this. This here, the recurve bow. It's the upgraded bow for our archers. I would like you to make five, so that we always have one in stock for whenever we make some new archers. So now our archers will be a little bit stronger than they currently are. Which is very, very good. Okay, so do I now have the engineer working? Yes, I do. Please make me the engineer's tool bench. Then I'm going to need iron gears, bronze gears, and then once I level up, I can get things like turrets and turnip shooters. Surprisingly, I always had more success with the turnip shooters rather than the turrets. I don't know why, it just kind of happened that way. Okay, so the engineer's tool bench is now down, so let's maintain 20 bronze gears and 20 iron gears. The reason is, this way we will be forcing the blacksmith to level up because we are about to exhaust our supply of iron and our supply of bronze. Now it may look like we have very little of both, but that's just because the blacksmith should only be holding 10 of each. And at the moment, we've been getting more from missions, more from killing things, than we've been using. So it's kind of collected here, and we've just used two of these to make the tool bench. Brand new die, and it's going to be a while before we get any new people. And the new person, before I forget, does need a bed. You are already owned, you are 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 not owned, and therefore, you get to sleep there. It seems like, other than a few random piles like this, I have finally ran out of wood for the village. And a few of you made a really interesting observation, and that is that the trees, although they can grow into each other with the leaves, it's the tree trunks which seems to limit their growth. If one's tree trunks hit the other, that's what stops them. Now, the trees I'm planting here are going to be a little bit of a test, and this is because I want to see if the tree trunk can grow over a gap. I'm thinking it won't be able to, but I guess we will see very, very soon. The enemies are over there, okay, so let's send in our forces to annihilate them before they send an, an attack against us. And then back to planting the trees. Well, I've been proven wrong. Apparently the trees can indeed grow over a gap. We will have to see, though, what happens when they grow up to their next size, because the next size is medium, then after that, of course, believe it or not, it's large. Yep, it's large oak tree. Now, there was actually a large oak tree over here, which I could have looked at in the first place for size, and yeah, I think we should have separated these a little bit more. They will definitely get to medium, but they won't be able to get to large size. So as soon as they're medium, we're going to cut them all down and have a lot of resources. That is a lot of scaffolding. And what are you doing? You're going over there to grab... How did that even get there? And I swear, I don't think the savoury meat stew at the bottom of the lake is actually edible anymore. Or even in the bowl. I swear I have been watching this raccoon for the last few minutes. It's really hypnotic and really stupid at the same time. And it's much worse in fast forwards. A new day and a new person, which for now will just stay as a worker. But as you can see, they have a very high mind stat and a decent body stat, which means they would most likely make a very good archer. In addition to this, they do have the trait courageous, which means they do actually get happy when they're fighting. So definitely would make a great archer. So that is your future. So now we have two new people. One one which is already a blacksmith, and you, which are going to be just a worker, at least for the foreseeable future. Now let's put down some of the new wall lanterns, and actually this reminds me, very soon 
I need to start using the market stalls so that I can continuously sell our items. Now, every time there's a merchant, I do sell as much as possible, but since they have a limited amount of gold, it does take a while to really shift any of our goods. There we are. And that should go there, correct? Yes, okay. So, there go the lights. That shouldn't take too long at all. And by the looks of things, we're just about done with the main section here, which means now I can put down some ladders. Did that go? Yes, it's there. It's just very, very hard to see. And kind of going over the window, which does look a little bit odd. Let's have two of them so the space is filled, there we are, and that means they can get off at any level since the hole goes all the way down to ground level. Which means they now have access to this door to actually place it and they can go along the top section. All is good. Wow, they did that really quickly. Well, with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. In the next episode, the main thing I would like to focus on, of course, is doing more of the wall, but also finally doing something with this storage area, having somewhere to sleep on top so that people simply have somewhere to sleep, as you can imagine. Hopefully, with how much space we have here, we could maybe have six different bedrooms on the top section and thus house six different people and thus get everyone out of this underground section, which honestly looks more of a prison than any type of home. And sadly, no new people. So with that, if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stone Half is a series you would like to see continued in the future. And please bear in mind, there are now two people who need names, our new blacksmith, and our new worker, who will eventually be an archer. So, thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. This is probably going to be quite a long video.